I'm sitting here with Søren Krog, uh, CEO of Columbus. You just released your Q2 results, so let's dig a little bit into those. Uh, looking at the top line, the Nordic IT consultancy sector have looked very challenged this quarter, but you deliver 8% organic growth, 10% for the half year, actually in the top end of your guidance. Mm -hmm. So challenging market development, but you're still delivering. What's behind that? Uh, I think what's behind it is that the, primarily our two largest uh, uh, business lines, so the, the, ER, the, the, the combined ERP business lines, uh, are performing very well. Uh, these uh, projects tend to be have a very long planning horizon and the customers that we serve today are very big corporations as well. So um, whilst they might have some concerns, they don't stop these projects. So we continue delivering. We continue expanding on them, um, so I think we benefit sort of tremendously from knowing our positioning strategy. Who do we serve? Who do we work for? And, and what we do really well. And then let's look a little bit further down the line. Uh, the margins also been a terrible story actually in the Nordic mm -hmm. uh, IT consultancy sector. You are also suffering a little bit from lower utilization. You know how how much you you use your your workers, and it looks like a little bit like it's in uh, security and di digital e-commerce. You know, so have you? Can you explain a little bit about that? And have you did something to mitigate that so it's uh, not a problem going forward? Yeah, and uh, and you're definitely on to something. It's a little bit of a, a tale of, of two cities. So th the majority of the business uh, fares very well, the, 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 the ERP business units, but also our CXE business unit, our data and AI business unit. Um, and they also perform well in terms of contribution. Uh, but we, ha we do have two challenging business units that are both challenged in terms of revenue development and margin development, and those are the exact units. So e-commerce and um, and security, and we have uh, indeed done something in the in the second quarter. So uh, when it comes to e-commerce, uh, we sort of completely reorganized the unit. It's a new way of, of, of organizing it. Uh, different setup for the leadership team, um, more market focused. But we've also done some capacity adjustments to it. Um, and you could say largely the same for the security business. We started a bit earlier, already back in Q1, with the first capacity adjustment but a big reorganization in Q2 and a different focus. So now much closer aligned to our cloud services, the ERP units, where we have more market strength. Uh, it's actually a different type of security service that we want to expand in whilst maintaining the uh, what, what we already had. Um, and, um, and a further uh, capacity adjustment. So that's already been concluded and it's already contained within the Q2 numbers, the, the cost of the exercise. And actually also, you are, uh, some have reiterated the guidance, but we've also seen some downward adjustments to guidance in, in the Nordic IT sector. You have re reiterated yours, 8 to 10% uh, organic growth and uh, 9 to 10% uh, margins. Can you talk a little bit about the business climate? Because we're hearing from everybody in this sector that that the customers are prolonging the decision process. And secondly, talk a little bit about what is it that, that why you're expecting still to lift margins into to the to the second half? Is that the, because you were so swift out and, 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 and you might say fixing the, the, the lower utilization? Yeah, I, I, th I think part of the, the solution for us has been that it would, the problems we had were very isolated, so they were quite easy for us to address. It's much more difficult when, you're, when, you're, when you are soft across the whole business with 1,600 people. We could sort of go in and pinpoint the problems and address them. Um, when it comes to the outlook, uh, um, I don't think we are... Oh, uh, currently, we're not expecting a big pickup in the second half year. So the, it's a little bit challenging. It has been a little bit uh, challenging and we, we expect that to continue. Um, we don't see any immediate solutions to all the, the bigger uh, geopolitical issues and um, also uh, macroeconomics are uh, um, yeah. ab absolutely still um, challenged challenge, uh, um, and, and provide some uncertainty. So we've taken that into account when we look at our expectations. But we also just have to say that we have now, after two or three years of professionalizing the business, we have a very, very good l um, way of looking into the future. When we can look at our order backlog, we can uh, look at our pipeline, we can look at the projected work we have uh, for our customers, um, and we trust those numbers more and more going forward. So it's, for us, it's a combination of looking at, uh, at the things we're in control of and the things we're not in control of. So, um, and, and the 
the uh, we spend a lot of time uh, uh, looking at this right now and and the, the conclusion for us is we're expecting market conditions to be fairly similar to q1 and q2 uh, in in the in the um, remaining two quarters and i think we've even taken sort of a smidge of uh, it could get slightly more challenging Okay, perfect. Yeah. Then let's look at the longer term. You have this uh, new heights uh, strategy, 10% uh, around organic growth, but but doubling the margins from from where from your starting point. And and uh, you done a lot of stuff uh, to start this and 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 do this. Can you see some early signs of that working or all the all the different building blocks mm. that, that should should keep your margins up and talk a little bit about everybody seems to have a little bit under utilization in, in this business how hard is it to keep the ball on the eye here and, uh, and, and, and 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 is that maybe also very important to keep the ball on the eye and then uh, react swiftly uh, yeah so so all of the initiatives that we presented in in EBITDA 15 we've kickstarted all of the Uh, initiatives of course and uh, some of them have a three-year sort of uh, run-in uh, but we can certainly start to see some of the results uh, I would sort of the, the, the most positive for me is is uh, to look at uh, all of the projects that we do um, and then see sort of the, the the first gross or contribution margin that we obtain from that so that's a, a question of both optimizing what's good but it's certainly also a uh, a question of avoiding uh, very bad projects because uh, that's both a financially uh, bad position for us to be in but it also inevitably means that a customer gets disappointed yeah, yeah. so so basically reducing the number of, of, of qualities uh, or, or projects that don't run according to plan has already brought us the, the first big uplift we've also seen a big uh, increase in um, in the amount of uh, hours delivered out of our um, uh, offices in, in Hyderabad and in, in Poland. Um, so that works, but there's still a long way until we reach our full potential. Um, we're also working and continue to work on this rebalancing of the organization. So we have very much of a diamond shape right now with many senior resources. We don't want to be a pyramid with a few seniors and a lot of juniors. We would just like to strengthen the, the junior layers uh, relatively. Um, and we're doing that. Uh, if the business climate had been less challenging, I would probably have done that a little bit faster. But that's those are the conditions we operate under. So um, I'd say we're, we're following plan. Thank you, Zan. Hmm?